Why, hello there. It is Tuesday. A wonderful Tuesday. But we also have to remember, 80 years ago, something terrible happened to America. And we must honor the vets. We must honor the remaining survivors. We must honor the servicemen and civilians that lost their life 80 years ago in Halano, Hawaii. Today makes 80 years to the date of Pearl Harbor. And this is going to be more like news, but it doesn't really matter. It's a history lesson from the history.com. Pearl Harbor is a U.S. Navy base near Honolulu, Hawaii, was the scene of the devastating surprise attack by Japan forces on December 7th, 1941, just before 8 a.m. On Sunday morning, hundreds of Japan fighter planes descended onto the base where they managed to destroy or damage nearly 20 American naval vessels, including eight battleships, over 300 airplanes, more than 240 Americans died that died in the attack, including civilians. Another 1,000 people were wounded. The day after the assault, President Franklin D. Roosevelt asked Congress to declare war on Japan. The attack on Pearl Harbor was a surprise, but Japan and the United States have been edging towards war for decades. The United States was particularly unhappy with Japan's increasing belligerent attitude towards China and Japanese government believed that the only way to solve its economic and demographic problems was to expand into its neighbor's territory and take over the import market. To this end, Japan declared war on China in 1937 resulting in the Nanking massacres and other atrocities. We don't really talk about Japan's crime, war crimes. I mean, we always talk about Hitler and the concentration camps, but we don't talk about the war crimes of Japan. If my memory serves me correctly, Hitler doesn't even hold a candle to the war crimes that Japan did. They were brutal. They were ruthless. I don't know if the, the death count was higher, but some of the things the Japan army did were terrible. American officials responded to this aggression with the battery of economic sanctions and trade embargoes. They reasoned that without access to money and goods, and especially essential supplies like oil, Japan would have to rein into its expansionism. Instead, the sanctions made the Japanese more determined to stand their ground. During months of negotiation between Tokyo and Washington, D.C., neither side would budge, and it seems that war was all but inevitable. Pearl Harbor, Hawaii, is located near the center of the Pacific Ocean, roughly nearing 2,000 miles away from the U.S. mainland and about 4,000 miles from Japan. No one will believe that the Japanese will start a war with an attack on the, on the distant islands of Hawaii. Additionally, American intelligence officials were confident that any Japanese attack would take place in one of the relatively nearby European colonies in the South Pacific, the Dutch East Indies, Singapore, or Indochina. Because American military leaders were not expecting an attack so close to home, the naval facility at Pearl Harbor were relatively undefended. Almost the entire Pacific fleet was moored around Ford Island, in the harbor and hundreds of airplanes were squeezed onto adjacent airfields. To the Japanese, Pearl Harbor was a resistible easy target, unfortunately. The U.S. Arizona, the Japanese plan was simply to destroy the Pacific Fleet. That way, the Americans would not be able to fight back as Japan armed forces spread across the Southern Pacific on December 7th after months of planning and practicing, or practice, Japan launched their attack. I mean, if you actually look into the history of the what Japan did, is that they actually had torpedoes that really wouldn't work around Hawaii. 
Ingenious, yes. I mean, you have to recognize and acknowledge that they were able to overcome a an issue because the water around Hawaii was definitely different than the water around Japan, as in the currents was different. I think Japan was more deep water, where Hawaii was a little bit more shallow water. And they had to find a way to get the torpedoes to actually go where they were intended. Around 8 a.m., Japanese planes filled the sky over Pearl Harbor. Bombs and bullets rained into the vessel. Mourned below, at 8.10, 1,800 pound bombs smashed through the deck of the battleship USS Arizona and landed in her forward ammunition magazine. The ship exploded and sank with more than 100 men trapped inside. Next, a torpedo pierced the shell of the battleship USS Oklahoma with 400 sailors aboard. The Oklahoma lost her balance, rolled onto her side, and slipped underwater. Less than two hours later, the surprise attack was over. Every battleship in Pearl Harbor, USS Arizona, Oklahoma, California, West, Virginia, Utah, Maryland, Pennsylvania, Tennessee, and Nevada had sustained significant damage. All but USS Arizona and Utah were eventually salvaged and repaired in record time. I think it was like six months to eight months. They were back in the back to battle readiness, which was pretty impressive. In all Japanese attack, Pearl Harbor crippled or destroyed nearly 20 American ships, more than 300 airplanes, dry docks, air, and airfields were likewise destroyed. Most important, 200, not 200, 2,403 sailors, soldiers, and civilians were killed, and about 1,000 people were wounded. But the Japanese had failed to cripple the Pacific Fleet, by the 1940s, battleships were no longer the most important naval vessel. Aircraft carriers were. And as it happened, all of the Pacific Fleet carriers were away from the base on December 7th. Some had returned to mainland and others were delivering planes to troops on Midway in the Wake Island. Moreover, the Pearl Harbor assault had left the base Mostly virtual onshore facilities, oil storage depots, repair shops, shipyards, and submarine docks intact. As a result, the U.S. Navy was able to rebound, rebound relatively quickly. President D. or President Franklin D. Roosevelt addressed the joint session of U.S. Congress on December 8th, the day after the crushing attack on Pearl Harbor. Yesterday, December 7th, 1941, a day will live in infamy. The United States of America was suddenly and deliberately attacked by a naval and air force of Empire of Japan. He went on to say, no matter how long it takes us to overcome this premeditated invasion, the American people in their righteous might will win through the absolute victory. I believe I interpret the will of the Congress and of the people when I assert that we will not only defend ourselves to the utmost, but will make very certain this form of treachery shall never endanger us again. After Pearl Harbor, for the first time during the years of discuss discussions and debate, the American people were united in their determination to go to war. Japanese wanted to go to the United States into agreement to lift the economic sanctions against them. Instead, they pushed their adversaries into a global conflict and ultimately resulted in Japan's first occupation by the foreign power. Did you know a single vote against Congress' declaration of war against Japan came by Representative Jeanetta Raiklin of Montana? Raiklin was a pacifist who also voted against the American interests into World War I. As a woman, she says, I can't go to, go to war, and I refuse to send anyone else. Because at the time, females were not allowed to join the military, but they were allowed to go over as nurses. 
Three days later, the Japan allies Germany and Italy, or Italy declared war against the United States based off of their treaty and alliances. For the second time, Congress precipitated declaring war on the European powers more than two years after the start of World War II. The United States has entered the conflict. And that is a brief history of Pearl Harbor, the day that we joined the fray and went to war, joining the other allies in World War II. Please take a moment to reflect on our history, honor those that gave our sacrifices that day, and the brave men that stormed the Asian front, the Pacific front, is a front that doesn't get much notary or talked about that much. We talk about European victories. We talk about D-Day. But we don't really talk about the Pacific Front. Those men, brave men, put their lives on their li- their lives on the line. Were pretty much island hopping. Every island was its own D-Day. Every island, the Japan Army fought tooth, tooth and nail, and every last one of them, we defeated. Every day was D-Day for the Pacific Front. And that is a feat in itself, and we must honor those people, not just the people of Pearl Harbor, but the brave soldiers that fought in the Pacific Front. Their stories mainly go untold, which is a shame, because they accomplished so much. I'm not saying that the European Front isn't just as exciting and wasn't as dangerous but the fight was more intense in the Pacific. With that being said, let's honor them. Have yourself a wonderful day, morning, or evening.